Thanks for listening to or watching the Upland Down Under podcast. Tonight's show is recording live on Thursday, the 18th of January at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. On tonight's show, we're going to catch up on the Upland market floors, of course. We'll check in on the neighbourhood ratings for January and we'll reflect on the first week of totem life and the recent arrival of the Upland UGC playground in Open Better. Main topic for this week's show, I've pegged that as the highly anticipated Tokyo expansion is here. but should I stay or should I go now? For a 5,000 Upex pop quiz for our live participants, which English rock band did I steal that main topic line from? Ready, go. In chat or voice. Should I stay or should I go? Come on. Any old punks at there? I know this and I can something to do with my tongue and it won't come out. Going it's once? The... Going twice? Uh, clash. Clash. Oh, the little man got it. Nice Googling. <laughs> Ah, the, the band that. wrote chat uh, at the same time. <laughs> he, he just tipped you there, I think, the band. Yes, the clash. Should I stay or should I go? Old classic, that one. So, yes, we've also got a quips on protem feeding for totems, and we'll take a look at another Upland community member spotlight care of the Dynamic Node Builders team. All that more, of course, on this the Upland Down Under podcast. If you're wondering how you can take part live, uh, you just got to get into the NBA server where I dropped the link to the Zoom about 15 minutes prior to kicking off. Right, let's just get straight into it and run through it because, as I said before, we get kicked off. It's boiling hot here and I'm stuck in this little tiny room, sweating my proverbial ring out. So, yes, now I'm doing this a little bit differently. I've put it all on the web tab, so we'll see if that works this week. Let's see how we go. The market stats care of Swally Man. Thank you for that, Swally. You saved the day this afternoon as I was mad panicked to get a few things done. 90-day averages. Whoa. Wouldn't we like to see some heavy green in these numbers? It just seems like chipping away red every week, week after week. So the transaction volume down another 2.5% and the trading volume down 0.3%. Unique active wallets also down kind of a... It's probably the first time we've been under 50,000 there for a while, down 3.2%, 49,920. And this is interesting. Total unminted properties has gone under the 300,000 mark and we have a city release. I wonder, I just wonder if that's some kind of weird number that they've got pegged as, okay, if we go under 300,000 active properties, it's time to release the next city. Most probably not, but it's interesting nonetheless. And that means we had 2,660 or so properties minted through the week. I didn't have a look at these numbers very closely before we got kicked off. What have we got going on? Arlington up 10% on the USD. Bronx is moving on the UPX was 9,000 last week up to a bit over 10,500. Dallas, big jump on the UPX and a huger jump on the USD. Up 20% on the UPX now, just under 15,000, and up almost 38% on the USD. It was $4.50 last week, $6.20. What's going on in Dallas? Um, what else we got? On the flip side, Fresno down 14% now at the $3 floor. Mm -hmm. LA up on both the UPX and the USD. Um, pushing towards 8,000 and off the $3 floor, just under $3.50. Not much else jumping out. New Orleans down 11.5% on the UPX. Uh, what else we got? Hard to see at the bottom there and not much happening. Tokyo, well, that's interesting. Before the city expansion, Tokyo up a WAP on the UPX and the USD was 19,469 last week, now flirting with 24,000. And was $7.75 last week, flirting with $10. Hmm. All right, that's pretty interesting. All right, I'll remember this week. Look, we'll jump straight over to Neighbourhood Ratings Leaderboard. Red Hook still out in front, maintaining a pretty significant lead there over Mercer Manor. The figure doesn't look that much different, but what it takes to bump that number is a hell of a lot of work. Some of our Midtown Terrace are still hanging in there at third place. Square would bring it up. And then a bunch of the other ones, Prayer, Sherwood, Greenwich Village, Bayswater, Dogpatch, South of Market, Bronxdale, Boys Town, Palmer Park, Hansardam, Civic Centre, Bridge. Now, I did get a message for the week how to say this one, but I'll butcher it again. Was it Spiten Duval? Apologies. I know I butchered that again. 
Edge me, Harlem. And, oh, that's good to see Lake Wacomas getting a bit of love on there as well. So that's all I've got. Of course, this last week has been all about totems. Um, how's everyone been going with the totems? I know, Bula Man, you said, what, you have 2 a.m. alarm and now you've got a 10 a.m. one? Are you are you loving totem life? <laughs> oh, these small little kids. Ah, <laughs> no, it's uh, th these two a.m. alarm is uh, the one I missed uh, sometimes <laughs> because it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's shit. Um, not not uh, <laughs> yes, not good timing at the this totem, but the other ones uh, after the community did this awesome discoveries uh, over the first the first days and all the spreadsheets popping up from nowhere yep um i could time the other totems uh, so that um, there is not too centered in the night <laughs> to to feed and it's uh, 11 p.m and the first one is 6 a.m and that's the the, the normal uh, sleep schedule of mine so it's okay it's only this this 2 a.m little one yeah, but hey, little happy. kids, they wake up in the middle of the night and cry for, uh, please put the blanket back to, <laughs> to me. So, hey, if I'm, if I'm awake, I can feed the totem too. Yes, that they do, that they do. Yeah. Yeah. Next cycle, not this timing. <laughs> How many have you got activated at once? Um, I got a six out of ten. Six out of ten. Hmm. Uh, we we uh, started right at the beginning, uh, yep. and uh, so I started um, in the last minutes where it was um, possible to start them to just prove some of the findings and uh, yeah, put all this together together in my little tools. <laughs> yes, we'll get to that in a second. And Levan's mentioned that there. He said it isn't that complicated. Then in the beginning, Bulemans told you saved my life, and I don't care about the perfect feeding time anymore. It produces more than I put in now, so that's good. Oh, that's good. If it lives, I'm happy. I don't want to turn my life upside down for totems. Yes, Lily, I do have that ready to go. That's very good stuff. Um, I kind of like the way Swali, I believe, approached it, where you you have a few, but you've only activated one. Is that correct? And you're kind of waiting for the next ones to see how you go. That's correct. I only activated it, and by chance it was a blue one, so I believe it's either 38 or 40 hour cycle, mm. which means I don't need to do much. Um, I have about 10 all up. I'm actually going to, because I figured no one's going to want the orange ones with the eight hour cycles. Um, I'm actually going to try and have a crack at doing that, so I've been snapping up a few orange ones here and there. Nice. So, But I'm working very much on the eight-hour cycle, so I do have some other colors, but I'm getting rid of things like the brown ones, which are 12 hours, so it doesn't fit into the eight-hour. So I'll keep, I think I've got a purple one, which I think 16 hours, so that fits in, so it just means every second time that one gets fed, and the blue one, I think if it's 40 hours, it's like every fifth cycle, so... That's I, my plan, I like but... the I, li I like the green ones the most because twenty four hours. Hey, every time at the same day. <laughs> yeah, I've got three of those, and who would have thought? Because at the beginning, I was getting a lot of green ones opening up, not the the more common one, not the rarer of the two each time. But I, yeah, green. I thought that was crap, and some of the other colors looked so much better. But yeah, green turned out to be the best color. There you go. Yeah, no, I think that's a good ploy. Like, I mean, the the FOMO was always was always going to be there to activate as many as you could to kick off with, but that that's definitely the smart play to start off slow and steady and wait wait for all of these tools and all of the knowledge to be developed before you dive in a bit further. So, I don't know. Anybody else want to chime in with your experiences so far? Has anybody managed to crack what what um what do they call it the uh, the output curves? Has anybody managed to get that? Is there a way to see what output curve you're on at the moment? My red wolf is just pumping out like ten every time. I'm feeding it sixty, and it's just I think it's pumped out ten the last three times. Um, yeah, there are some theories. Yep. So, so far we're thinking maybe the dragonfly is a wave because it started to pay profit quite fast. Mm -hmm. So that has to go down again, one would think. So it's possibly the wave and the um, 
the brown one, the um, shark. We're thinking that's a hockey stick because it's just like really, really small increases or leveled out. So it doesn't like it's paying anything anytime soon. Interesting. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's a bit too early to uh, uh, discover the whole curves. Mm. I've um, the, the my panda. Uh, 24 hours, uh, a green one, looks like an exponential curve, but I think <laughs> this will not uh, last until the uh, last interval. Um, so maybe that's that's a wave, but hey, need to wait a bit, uh, a few more days uh, to see if the the other ones start going up or uh, the panda, which is giving uh, 90 back to, while feeding 30 at the moment. Uh, will get down again pull back a bit yeah. yeah well that's that's interesting that you mentioned that the the animal type or the totem type might be tied to it because yeah there's it says there's six archetypes but of course one of those is the llama so you can discount that and then there would be five so yeah five five for ten so two two totem life forms share the same type i think yeah yeah so yeah that's interesting hmm. i'll have to wait and see but yeah i'm sure awesome. Yep, sorry. I know some people have said they have had definite steps. Mm. So it's gone up in steps. So they're likely to be the step one, but I can't imagine which one it is. I haven't had any look to see exactly what that one is. It's not me. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've step, steps in some, some of the tokens too, but it's, I think, because I adjusted the, the feed amount. Um, and if I adjusted them two or three pro term up, and so the output got get a little step up one interval after it. So I think it's it's not the archetype of the the output curve. It's just because I yeah, put a bit more food in <laughs> to get get a bit more out of the totem. A bit more else. Yeah, let's see the next days. I'm I'm curious what the palm tree does. It's a, a straight line, a 25 protem in, 10 protem out, mm. nine times in a row. Uh, yeah, let's let's see. <laughs> yeah, Laban's mentioned a good point there in chat too. Upland could change the feeding times, right? Question mark. Well, technically, yeah. I mean, this first one is kind of a bit of a test, so I guess that's a possibility that they could tweak it in between. So he goes on to say, so investing in new ones now without knowing how the cycle two to five will play out might be a bit of a risk. Hmm, could be. Um, what are you playing with? Twenty four in at the moment, out increasing over thirty. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Is anybody starting to sweat? Are you starting to run out of your airdropped totem? Uh, protem, sorry. No, um, for me not. I um, every every totem is uh, the, the most I spent was on a gold four hundred, and uh, there is a, a small increase. So I think this could be the the one which um, may need a bit more than the. 555 to get into the profit zone but on the other hand i got this this panda which is uh, which already get more totem back uh, more protein back than i invested so uh, i'm a little bit positive on these tools and the other ones 250 300 uh, invested mm. or or spent so i think the 555 may be enough for everyone so um I don't think they calculated that you need to buy if you hit the right spots and the right amounts. Mm. There are people who invested 500 <laughs> pro term Straight in the first the feed bats. cycle, so that um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's okay. Th one. This is then the, the the penalty for them that they need to buy um, a pro term from the store. But I think if you handle them right and don't do <laughs> some of these actions, you may get enough for one cycle yeah i mean i i'm feeding one totem with two uh protom allocations and i'm already down to 780 if i only had the one drop there i'd only have about 230 left which is maybe f another four days worth and like i said i'm putting 60 in and only getting 10 out at the moment that that would unless it's gonna turn around sometime soon that's probably gonna get a bit hairy at some stage but uh, yeah, I have to wait and see. But related to that, of course, we do have, uh, where is it? 
not that one, this one. So we do have Proterm still available in the Upland store. The 10,000 UPX plus 80 Proterm pack is still the vast, you know, more than 80% of those left over. The 50,000 UPX and 500 Proterm still swags of those left too. And of course, it's interesting that the one that's been gobbled up the most is the most expensive one, the $100 one. So I wonder if somebody in particular... Yeah, somebody in particular might have been snaddling those up too, perhaps. I don't know. Yes. I, yeah. It's just going to be very interesting to, to see how how the, all that mechanics works out. Like, uh, have the numbers been worked out so that you're going to be on the ragged edge of your totem surviving and it's kind of pushing you towards the FOMO to get the in-app purchase? Or is it going to be no worries at all? So, yeah, very interesting. Has anybody have you bought some Protum? Because that that's that's always a play too for people that were just looking to just cash in the one for one for the stem. You could always just buy it for the sake of buying it. I mean, it is technically for free, isn't it? You're buying the Apex and then you get the Protum for free. Yeah. Shaking heads. Yes, I know. No. I'm certainly, I'm definitely off the FOMO train myself on that one. Um. There are a few other things to look at with that. Now, one of the very good ones that's come up is Mr. Bewley Man himself. You've been very busy, mate. What's going on here? Rather me gob off on it, you can give us a bit of a heads up. Or what's this? I've got just your basic one here. And then just so you know where I'm at, I've also got my stats for my one here. If you're available and could run us through what this is all about. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just... Um... I'm uh, very uh, often in the developer tools of the browser um, and uh, to check what, which RP calls uh, the Upland app or the, the Upland uh, website does. Uh, and so I discovered, hey, I can get the totem stats. And the first version of this was uh, just the list of the 5,555 <laughs> uh, different uh, totems and the uh, stats. And then I said, OK, just Calculated my own rarity score besides the one from uh, Sunny Minded, um, which I added here too, um, to just check what what totems I got and if they're good or not yeah. before we know what we have to do with the totems. And then after all the discoveries um, in the last week or the last uh, one and a half weeks uh, from the community, I just thought, okay, uh, all my Google spreadsheets um, and all the things people asking for how to feed and what what to do, I just said, okay, uh, a night without sleep and uh, much coding, so you get the details page <laughs> um, where where I just um, yeah put together the, the the most information informations which got the most confirms from the community. So nothing highly speculative, but um, no financial advice. Um, yeah. Of course. Um, so I just thought, okay, let's let's do something, and um, it's it's a bit disappointing that I can't get the yields from mm -hmm. the Upland API. They are only on the blockchain, and uh, only the amount of Protem the user got. So it's uh, not possible to match them one to one to the totems where they are from. Mm -hmm. But the feeding uh, schedule. Um, yeah, the 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 protein you put in, you get in your spend history, and this is something uh, I can get from the blockchain uh, and from the API. So I just dumped all this into my database and uh, created, or well, updated this side and created the details page. When yes. you switch to the other page. Um, so yeah, if you want to check this out, go to myupland.info and then you'll it's pretty easy to see where you go for totems and then there's a little search bar there. All I did was put in the code for my totem and what do you know, it spits out all of this awesome stuff. Wolf Totem 4C9D, it has the owner, the life form, all of the details, feed interval 30 hours. I think currently at the moment I'm feeding mine anywhere between 32 and 36. Um, I'm just feeding it whenever I think yeah, to do it. Uh, while, while playing with this, I 
I, I think um, you get a little penalty if you are too far away from the sweet spot. Mm. Um, I, I didn't dig much into it to see if this is uh, if it's off more than an hour or two hours or thirty minutes or something like that. But I I see my my output got a little bit boosted, yeah, yeah. one or two percent up um, after I switched to the feed spot plus minus five minutes. Yep. Um, so it looks oh. uh, looks that it's um, important to. Now, as you get more information, I'm assuming this will be further refined. Yes. yes. Yeah. If, if there are some changes or, or some new discoveries, I will update this page. Awesome. Um, yeah, because I, I use it myself. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um, so um, it's, uh, there's an intrinsic motivation to <laughs> keep it up to date. Absolutely. Well, I'd, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank you on behalf of the community if I dare do so um, for that sleepless night and the time you've put into the, this because it just seems like a fantastic tool and seems very intuitive, easy to follow, etc. So basically what this is saying is that my ideal feed interval is 30 hours and currently I'm feeding 60 per feed. So it looks like I could at least drop that down to 55 or something like that. Yeah, you could you could try it. Uh, if you do so, uh, take a look at your uh, yields you get uh, and mm -hmm. uh, tell me if they are going down too, <laughs> yeah. or if they they stay the same. If they stay the same, there's uh, no need to feed more because this is what Upland uh, called uh, you wasting your pro dem. Yeah. They they stated it uh, some somewhere in the articles that if you feed too much, all you feed over is gone. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've been pretty good with the feed amounts, but the feed interval's been all over the place. Even with that, though, I have managed to increase my spend score to a bit over 82%, which I think it was down in the, I, th I don't know if it was in the 40s or the 70s when I kind of stuffed it up at the start. It was quite low, so it is tracking back in the right direction. So what else have we got here? Let's probably see all of the, the bad stuff I've done. So this is... All of these columns on the left here, this is what I should have been doing. And the ones on the right, this is what I actually did by the looks of it. Yes, you know, uh, yes I, I calculated the intervals from the initial feeding. This is uh, 9th January 20, uh, 20 p.m. UTC, if you UTC, don't set yeah. your offset. Yep. Um, and then the interval is for the first one, it's the, the, the half of the 30 hours because you it, it seems, or it, it, it is not confirmed from Upland, but all the findings show that you start on the sweet spot uh, to feed. So you have half an interval to go till enter interval end, and uh, this feeding sweet spot is the one you are actually feeding your totem with the 30 and then uh, 15 again. So you wasted the 15 pro time from the second feed because they don't yep. count. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, and maybe you way. should get a, a message uh, you feed too low for the 30s. Um, I did, yep. Yeah, and then the second interval starts right in the first end. So the interval end from number one is the interval start from number two. Then you get the 30 hours on top. Um, and and the sweet spot is just, just in the middle one. So you were 17 hours off the sweet spot for the second interval. I'm all over the place. Yeah, 10 hours yeah. there, seven hours <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just doing it whenever, basically. But now that I have this information, I will I will make a bit more of an effort to try and track it. And that's that's purely thanks to you and the work you've put in there. So thank you very and much for that. And what's uh, interesting, you're, it seems like you have the old version of this page. Um, I um, just updated it to uh, not only in a red X, uh, um, because uh, I don't know, I got Steve uh, mentioned it, it, it would be nice to see if I actually missed this interval or if it's just an interval where I need to feed, mm. uh, feed the totem. Um, so I updated it that uh, to, to a text message, missed if you miss it, um, and uh, need to feed, uh, or you, you can feed, I don't know the message I put in, um, just to see if you... Uh, if it's the sweet spot is still in the future, then that you have the chance to, yep. uh, to feed it. Um, I will update uh, the the page another time because I said if the feed 
spot is in the future, you got the need to feed message, but it must be if you are still in the interval, you have to feed it's because yes. you still can feed after the sweet spot. Nice. Very good. Very helpful tool indeed. So yeah, make sure you get on over and check that out. My And if you, if you come across any conflicting data or whatever, yeah, send Bula man a DM. I'm sure he'll be able to have a look Just at send it. it. Send, send a Discord message if there's something wrong or you have something found that doesn't look um, as you think it should. <laughs> Just uh, send me a Discord message and uh, yeah, like hundreds of people already did, and uh, the backlog got longer and longer. And um, yeah. Yes. It's nice to get feedback from the community too. Uh, they are all very thankful and I just got uh, some stuff. Someone sent some epics. Uh, DTech uh, sponsored me a card from his uh, um, his production to say thank you. And that's all I want. If I give something and I get something, hey, it's all fine. Yeah? That's um, fine. They are all, all the other tools like Apex, Land & Co uh, who give uh, something for free I use. So well, why... Don't give something back. Awesome, mate. Like I said, very much appreciate all of your efforts there. Um, there are, of course, a number of people putting out videos related to totems and that stuff. I have I managed to catch a couple from Shackle on, on her new channel. Um, probably worth checking that out too. She's got a there's at least two videos there that I've seen. So check her on out at YouTube. Just search for Shackdelen or Shack Attack, and I'll have the link in the description for her channel, new channel as well. So give her a give her a follow, give her some likes, all that sort of stuff. So that's Totems. Now moving on to the Upland Playground. Now I don't know, Lily, are you still on? Are you able to speak to this? I kind of touched on this a bit in the other kind of podcast show I did, but. I only played around with it very briefly myself and I had a bit of a look in chat and there seemed to be a bit of a, still a bit of a scaling issue, but other than that, it seems pretty fun. Looks pretty good. Yeah. I haven't really used it. I used it to check a building would fit before I bought a block of land, but other than that, I haven't really used it. Yeah. And I, I don't know how helpful that aspect will be when there's, there seems to be that scaling issue as well. So hopefully they get that fixed up. Yeah, it had plenty of room around it, so I figured it'd be fine. Yep. Yeah, if it's only um, I know a tool like that would have been so helpful when I was looking to put my speedway metaventure up in mid ten terrace because that that fit in by you know fractions of an up squared. So yeah, that's going to be super handy, not just for the UGC content creators, but just the wider community. Indeed, and that, that is in open better as well. So make sure if you do spot some kind of funky things going on with it or it doesn't work, try to take the time to patch that through, even if it's just to tag a CM or something in Discord. Um, I'm sure they'll point you in the right spot to help get that fixed up. All right, moving on to the big news, of course. Tokyo expansion, a new era begins in Upland. Now that that seems pretty impressive. Um guess they're talking about the the way they're doing this whole city release. There's a, there's a lot of stuff in here that's kind of new and interesting to unpack. A lot of it's already taken place, so it'll be a bit of a reflection on that, but of course the actual city expansion itself hasn't taken place. So Minato City um very close to where we've already been. There's a couple of very expensive neighborhoods in there, I believe, Rapongi and all sorts of things. So I was actually a bit surprised that the prices weren't even more than what they said. Um, very few FSAs, which kind of gives you a hint from the get-go that she's going to be hexy. Um, 16,000 properties all up, 30 neighborhoods, four new collections. Now, this is very interesting that they... They've started to do this price, low price, seventeen thousand. You got to expect those; those have to be the FSAs, surely. So, even a non-FSA, just rando small property, you got to be thinking that's over the the twenty mark, twenty thousand upex mark, or something like that. But the high, the like the most expensive property, only eight eight hundred and eighteen thousand UPX. So, what that tells me is that there's not going to be very many big properties available. So. 
I am personally still on the hunt for a factory site in Asia somewhere. So this was going to be one of my plays, but obviously I'm not even going to look at it for that because I think that's going to be wishful thinking. Average price, 64152 Oh, mama. That's a lot of epics. So I don't know. What did we think about just that from the get-go, then putting that stats out there? I'll... I like it. I think it's good. Gives you a bit of a reality check of what you might be getting yourself in for. Yeah, stop people wasting plane fare that know that they can't afford it. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Well, what do you do in that situation? Like, holy moly. Yeah, I mean, new players, you know, often waste, you know, 2K in plane fare, get there and realise they can't afford a property because they spent 2K on airfare. Yeah. They've probably just seen the headline and thought, yippee, I'm into this. And then, yeah, didn't read the final details. So, yes. So, we've got the expansion map as well. Only four new collections. But, of course, this this collection um, area is, I believe, is still going to be tied with the existing Tokyo collection area. So, it's not, it's it's exactly, it's it's not a new city although it is a city, it's just an expansion of the Tokyo city. So all of those new collections, I assume, are going to fall under the existing Tokyo collection manner. Is that, have I got the, the gist of that? I don't know. Hope so. Um, launch... honest, I didn't read it because mm. I'm not going. <laughs> yes. Should I stay or should I go? You're staying? Yes. Now yeah, I'm ha- sleeping. Sleeping in, yeah. So we have launch pad properties again. So it kind of makes sense. I would assume, although probably not, if this is just an expansion of Tokyo, you're not going to need a train or anything like that. It's probably eventually you're going to have to get in your car and burn on over there, which is a bit weird because that area is all about trains and subways. So who knows how that's going to play out. But yeah, we do have three launch pad properties. I had a search for these earlier in the day and it was sending me to a spot, but they weren't showing up. Perhaps they just haven't released those again. Hopefully it's not going to be like the Miami situation where we we had them, but the search didn't work and you had to go in there manually. That was a whole thing. So we'll see how that plays out. Collection reveal, of course, the week following after. Only four collections there. So it be very interesting to see if we've got streets or neighborhoods or what the mix-up is. I know... Um, I believe Banana had a chat today with the goldsmith. I haven't had a chance to catch up on that one myself. There might be some hints in there if you want to get it in last minute. Uh, Collection reveal, yes, yes, yes. And then we get to all of the extra fancy stuff they had going on. So Block Explorer sale, um, a bundles for the Block Explorer shop owners. That was pretty cool. And then individual ones, they look pretty cool. And then, of course, we speculated that the burn mechanic was something that they were going to be all into. And, yeah, well, that's what they're all about here. So you had to get you had to get one of these and one of those and one of those and burn them all together and you get one of these special samurai ones. Pretty cool. I mean, if you're into that kind of mechanic, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun with that. Helps uh, stimulate a bit of community involvement, buying, selling, trading and whatnot. So that's all pretty good. I woke up. I didn't register for any of these. I woke up this morning at 4.30 to begin my morning routine and still plenty of them available. Um, I was kind of half looking at it, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm in the process of USD out, not USD in myself. So I don't know. Anybody else? Did you get in? Did you get some of those? Did you buy them up? Looking to burn? Um, and oh, probably yes. that's I bought, I bought, UTC. I bought. <laughs> yeah, what'd you I get? I put some, um, the two, two masks. <laughs> um, and they just need to look what, uh, which one what, uh, there was the, the green one and the red one, I think. Um, nice. And as a block explorer shop owner, I will buy another package and then try the burn mechanics the first time, hmm. um, and take a look. Um, Maybe they get something special in the BE battle. Mm. Yes, Intent. you never know. Yeah. <laughs> Could be something to do with layer two or something that kicks off of these. Who would know? 
So, yes, that was all well and good. Um, Tokyo passes. I might as well bring that up again. So we saw that with Miami. I bought a Miami pass. I didn't end up trading it in to mint the property because it was just a random low mint property. So that wasn't really worth it for me at the time. And excuse me. So, yes, um, these took a while to sell out as well. They were just sitting there, heaps of them just sitting there for ages. Big green button staring at me, and I was like, oh, the pass looks really cool. Do I really need that in my wallet? No, I don't, was my eventual, um, my, that's what I ended up with. Now, does it have the price in here? What were they? Were they $10? $4.99. $4.99 for or the $5 pass. $5. Uh, five dollars, yeah. So the pass is five dollars, and then you're gonna have to mint one of those properties. What did they say? The base property was seventeen thousand, something like that. So you're talking about a floor from the get go that should be up over the twenty thousand mark. So I don't know. It's an it's an interesting mechanic. This one you got to pay for the pass, and then you got to pay to get the property anyway. So you don't forget to factor in the price of that in with everything else that's got going on. Or maybe you're just yeah, a collector of the it's, past. It's the, it's the FOMO again, yep. uh, which is a uh, fire tier because um, you can hit a collection property, which you get for the original mint, not the after reveal mint. Uh, yes. So you can get something good, but hey, I don't know what's the chance to get it. And that reminds me that I did see, it might have been Brabant, give everyone the heads up. A lot of people didn't take this information into account too. So if you get one of those passes, you get to build this specialized building. And some people, I thought, yippee, I'll do that. Not realizing that only 80% of the passes are going to allow you to do that. I wonder why they would do that. It seems very bizarre to just automatically piss off 20% of people that bought the pass. Absolutely. That should be 100% without a shadow of a doubt. It's a strange one, isn't it? Um, Maybe they will surprise us in uh, four or five, six years with some functionality for only these buildings and say, hey, no, you think you just had a chance to get them and if you go back five years and buy something, we Maybe. don't know. It's it, it's it's upland. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't personally I didn't think much of this building myself. I thought I guess maybe there's a building that looks like this somewhere there, but it's definitely not it's definitely not a you know something you're gonna see anywhere in there, but maybe that's the point, like the Miami structure, maybe that's the point. Um I actually went back and I think I started six or seven of those Miami buildings, I actually went back and demolished them all, except for the one that I gave away because I just thought, well, why am I actually building this thing? It was only, I just fell purely into the FOMO aspect of it myself. So that wasn't much of a carrot for me on that one. So I skipped that one completely. Yeah, it's yes. 800 out of 16,000. Yeah? So that they are, they are a kind, something special. And if someone says, hey, they add value to my property, maybe... Maybe we're all just waiting by the property under mint. Who knows with it on it? So, <laughs> and then yes, there will be like in Miami. There's going to be a limited time only to build this structure as well. I got, I thought when I first saw this image, I thought, oh, they've they've put the they've taken a screenshot of this building from the back. <laughs> um, but it's not. If you look at the other side, there's like air conditioners and that on it. Um, yeah, the building structure is just very strange. Very strange indeed. So, um, as I said, not something that jumped out and caught my attention. This was good though. Tokyo Terminal, they're giving these away. That's going to be part of the, the Minters lottery. So that's kind of cool. Hmm. So all in all, a lot of stuff happening there. A lot of new stuff, new city release. And it's, is it tomorrow? The expansion is set to, yeah, tomorrow 2 a.m. 3 a.m. So seven, seven hours, 20 minutes to go. Yes. So that begs the question, should I stay or should I go? I'm with Lily on this one. I'm completely going to be sitting this one out. I have flown to 
flown to Tokyo. I was in Cleveland to apply for a showroom there. Um, I did get on the plane. I did, did go to Tokyo. I I will have a bit of a kind of interested look in the morning when I get up, get up I'll check out where my tail is or I'll send it over there and just see what's available. Um, don't plan on buying anything there myself at all until collection reveal. If we get to collection reveal and there's a nice limited or a exclusive collection that's still available to mint, then yeah, that's something I'll definitely be willing to spend some upics on. Other than that, I'll just keep stacking, which is kind of patting myself on the back on that one because I did say, I think I said in the last week's show that my goal was to get to 2 million Upex before the next city release and, well, I hit that target uh, earlier in the week. So I've definitely got the UPX there for what I wanted to do, but the what seems to be the small upper UP2 sizes, that kind of checks me out of what I specifically wanted to go in there for and I'm really trying to get myself out of the habit of just buying stuff or minting stuff just for the sake of doing it, just to have stuff there. Um, especially because pretty much 90% of any time I'm devoting to Upland is to try and slim down and trim down my property stats and get back to something a bit more manageable and to just focusing on things I actually have plans to do with. Um, so anybody else, you all in, think it's going to be a good one, sleeping through? Me personally, um, I'm not getting involved in any of this at all. Not buying yep. any of the block explorers passes, or obviously not getting up at four AM. I normally, for expansions, only go to the um, collection reveal because I'm happy to pay the extra money for a collection, knowing that I'm minting a collection. Yep. I'm not even sure I'd bother doing that. To be fair. Yep. Real man, you're gonna jump in. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in uh, Tokyo, where my treasure hunting rep is. <laughs> before they nerfed it. <laughs> mm. Um. <laughs> So I think I will uh, just try to uh, get some some properties in the expansion area to to cover these uh, areas for treasure hunting. But I don't think I I go uh, I go all in with the uh, around seven hundred k on the bank. Um, yes. Uh, let's uh, just take a look. I'm 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 watching the APIs and uh, the neighborhood lines, and if they. Uh, um, Vent up. That's uh, yeah. Um, I will start the data grabbing bot on my side, which then uh, gets all the properties in if they are visible, and then yeah, maybe I try to sneak in and get one of the smallest one to get this mint master's badge or something like that. Uh, just, mm. uh, I, I don't need to put an alarm clock because it's you know, seven hours from now. We have 10 a.m., so it's uh, 6 p.m. here. So um, I um, can take a look over the day uh, between all the conferences uh, at the work. Um, and uh, maybe there's something uh, good I can grab, but I will not do um, some speculations about what will be a collection or what not, because um, everything I meant to discover it will be a collection ends with being nothing yes <laughs> um it's yeah. it's, it's, it's it's like every time i buy bitcoin uh the, the course <laughs> crashes after it yeah, so <laughs> um if you want something to go down just give me money and i buy it <laughs> <laughs> yes and just to be clear when you mentioned there that you're using a bot with the apis you're just ripping down the property information data you're yes. not you're not yes. um buying so no, or whatever no 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 no, no. it's yes. uh, just getting the information from upland like apex land and yep. the other ones and and then watching the blockchain for for the, the mint transactions put them in the database um so it's uh nothing illegal <laughs> yes I, I think um i did have a I did have a bit of a look after it was announced in general and i've had a look over the last i don't know probably off and on through the last day. I would say the vibe for this one seems to be really low. Um, doesn't seem to be a lot of interest and excitement about it, which seems strange because there's so much cool stuff associated with it. Um, I really think, well, I, I like that Uplands put the data on out there with the price list. I really think they need to go back to 
giving us the property, the neighborhood property lines, give us the, the, the property information, let us see the properties, let us see the cost that it's going to be. Um, give us a week to do that so we can make plans. Um, that's going to fuel people to get um, in conversations about, oh, do you want to get together and make a note or that sort of stuff that would definitely, I think that would help a lot to, you know, to kind of fire the community up a lot. It's, it's a bit sad. Even when I think about myself personally, like um, I love Japan, all about Japan, but this one, when it dropped, I'm like, nah, that just seems a, a bit sad and I don't know how that they can go about turning that around, but I think definitely getting as much information into the community as early as they can would, would really help to boost that. Maybe even try like giving um, collections, go back to putting the collections out there before the city releases. Who knows? Just mix it up a bit. Uh, I think they're, they are on the way to give us some more information and, and try to give us an, an, in small pieces and not mm -hmm. uh, all information uh, in all book because like all these property snipers and all these um, gray zone actors, um, um, yeah. I think if, if they say this will be an ultra rare collections, you will, mm -hmm. uh, you, you won't get a chance to get it on the normal way because all these uh, bots which do everything except the last click automated to say it's not fully automated. I have to click OK to do it. Yeah. Um, and then you have all the block explorers hanging on this spot where these will pop up after the release and they are gone in milliseconds. Yeah. And so a lot I of think they, people. They, <laughs> yes. So mm. I think they are just uh, trying to figure out an, an optimal spot to say, OK, we can give you this information about the city release mm. like they added the prices to in front. Yeah. Maybe next time we get the property lines a bit earlier than usual. Maybe they say, OK, this this uh, doesn't work out with the giving the prices out before the release and they take it back. Yes. Yeah, yeah well, that, that, that's a good point, too. So yeah, good on you, Mike. Bit of a flip side perspective on that one. I don't know. Anybody else want to chime in, Tokyo? Gonna stay, gonna go. Yeah, as I said, that doesn't appear to be a hell of a lot of excitement out there, which is a bit of a shame, I think. All right, we'll move on to our quips for this week. If you don't remember, quip stands for questions, insights, provocations, and statements. If at any stage you have one of those for us to dive into on the podcast, um, there's a link to the Google form. In the description, uh, you can DM them to me, of course, but chances are they'll get lost. And if you do put in a submission, put in your in-game name and you'll win yourself some kind of prize. Um, apologies, I did get, there's probably six or seven th that new ones that came through uh, this week. I decided to focus on just this one from Trendy Prop because it's kind of relative to what we've been talking about a little bit and it's quite lengthy, this one, so... This week, as I said, we've got a lengthy quips from Trendy Prop on totems, and he's got a request for a logical upper limit for protem feeding. He starts by saying, I, meaning he, recently accidentally fed a totem way too much protem. And as Bilame mentioned, there's been several people in the community that have done this from straight out the gate, feed it like hundreds of protem. He goes on to say, the reason for this was that I was trying to do too many things at once, I was working on my computer and it was time to feed a totem. I had the feeding pop-up open and I was also trying to enter the feeding time into Excel. Unfortunately, my cursor was still active in the feeding field because I had not properly clicked into the Excel field. Oh, shit. So he said, I typed in 2,333 for the local time, meaning 2,333. And he pressed enter without looking closely. Uh, I am usually very good and fast at typing and I don't even have to look at the screen, but then Murphy's law hit me. I mistakenly fed 2,333 protem. And when I returned to the totem screen, I automatically clicked away the confirmation window, believing that I had already fed the correct amount. It then hit me like a bolt of lightning when I checked my protem balance and realized my mistake. I have since submitted a support ticket requesting help, but I don't think anything can be done. After all, similar things happened to several players. Yep. Many have deposited far too much protem. 
He goes on to say, my request is therefore that Upland sets a logical upper limit for protum feeding so that too much protum cannot be fed. It is also questionable why Upland did not implement such an upper limit from the outset since excess protum is useless and does not provide any benefits. Well, if you want to put your tinfoil hat on there, you'd say it was a very smart move to boost the in-app purchase. But um, I'd say it's probably just an oversight more than anything. And he goes on to say, in the current implementation, it looks very much like a scam, which is what I just alluded to, because they have not entered an upper limit and have not announced a feeding maximum. Yeah, I, I, I think it's probably just a case of something they didn't anticipate. Um, he goes on to say they should have known that some players would place high stakes in anticipation of big winnings and that many players also deposit too much by mistake or through carelessness. I think I'm just to interject there too. I think it's because we started off this whole system with no guidelines at all. Um, it would be so easy if you weren't an active discord community member, if you'd brought one of these Pratum things and you'd just been following along with the Upland announcement, and you get in there for your first feed of protein, you, you'd have zero idea of how much you're supposed to be feeding this thing. So yeah, you you could easily put in two, 300 by mistake, thinking that you were doing the right thing, only to just waste it needlessly, as he said. So he goes on to say, maybe it helps to bring it up in the, oh, that's just, to me, that will skip all that. So, and he goes on to say, best regards, uh, Michael, AKA Trendy Prop. So yes. Thank you very much for that one, mate. It's thought-provoking. I don't know. Thoughts, opinions, upper limit for protein spending. Makes sense to me. Uh, Cerno says you get 555 protein per totem. Not illogical to assume at the start that maybe about half of that would make sense. Yep. Louis says very sad he lost so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, if the – just make it whatever the max is. I think it's probably the – the llama is probably the max, is it? So you wouldn't necessarily use that one. Maybe whatever the next highest tier one is. If the absolute max that you should be feeding these things is – is 80 will make that the upper limit or make it make it 100 so people can still play around with it a little bit but yeah or even better make it tied to the specifics of each totem so that the feed limit uh the warning that you would get like are you sure you want to overfeed this or something um or just make it so that you can't is tied to all of the different totem types so i don't know it sounds like a good one to me so Depending on what you think of about all of that, he has actually put together an official um, feedback form here. So he's got this. Uh, it's on the Upland Feedback Nolt, the protem feeding mechanism of the totems. And then it's just kicked out. I can't read it. Something improved. So it needs to be improved. So it pretty much goes on to say everything we just covered there. So if you want to check that out, if you agree, Make sure you get on over and give that an upvote. Link is in the description. So thank you very much for that trendy prop. Now, normally I do a couple of quips and give away a couple of different stacks of UPX, but because it was a big one and it's just the one this week, you've won yourself 15,000 UPX after fees. And remember that if you submit a quips yourself and you want to claim a prize for doing so, got to include your in-game name in the submission all right moving on to the dynamic node builders and their getting to know community members quest in this week's getting to know community members segment care of mesme and the other members of the dynamic node builders as i said they're featuring slav who is a well-known and prolific member of the 3d ugc community um, i'm sure you would have seen him here there and everywhere um, for a bit of extra context, before we take a look at his responses to the DMB questionnaire, Slav, whose in-game name is, now I'll, I'll pronounce this horribly, I would read this as Qurhi, Q-R-H-I. He's currently a director with a net worth at a bit over 6.5 million Apex. He's got 275 properties and a bit over three Spark. His home residence is in the Glenville neighborhood of Cleveland which if you weren't aware is related to the Super Miles United node of which he is a founding member of. All right, so let's check out old mate Slab's responses to the DMB questions, which is not that one. It should be this one, yes. 
So, and you're going to get out of the road team. Yes, you are. So in-game name is Quirvy, as I said. Uplander since May 2021. Would Slab survive the zombie apocalypse? No, he says. Guilty pleasure, smoking, tattoos, no. Bucket list, <laughs> models. What, making them, dating them? I'm not sure. Uh, has he been to Vegas? No. If you could start a charity, what would it be? Developing facilities for teen activities. Always a good one, that one. Most common interest search, internet, sorry, search history, Blender. Makes sense. Now, Mesme did follow up on me with this one. She wasn't sure here. Celebrity, you know the most about. Kenya West. Now, is this Kanye West? Kenya West? Is Kenya, Kenya West somebody? Not sure on that one. Might have been a... Might have been a um, auto correct that one. Introvert or extrovert? Introvert. Three Uplanders. He chats with regularly. Land for Land, Antique Master, and Coach Funk. And occupation. Glorified, glorified secretary for the world's largest machine. Interesting. All the answers on that last one's have all been very interesting. Read from that what you will. So. Good on your slab for getting involved. And if you yourself would like to get involved or you know of somebody who the community might be interested in learning a bit more about, then send Mesme or any of the Dynamic Node Builders members a DM and they'll hook you up. All right, moving on as we wrap up to some giveaways. Last week's MBA server competition, we had Totem Cycles have begun. And I asked, how's it all going for you? Let us know if you're skipping the entire thing. That's a valid submission to outline as well. Some good information in there. Bit, bit of a mixed bag. Um, your name, of course, was going to roll on a list of all entrants for the chance to win. 10,000 UPEX after fees. And, of course, get yourself another entry in the 2024 end-of-year prize draws. Let's give that away now. Assuming Wheel of Names is going to still be there. Or is it going to reload? No, it's there. Amazing. All right. Let's see. 10,000 UPEX. For the weekly challenge from last week goes to, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm working for you, Bueller Man. There we go. Bueller Man has taken out yes. another prize. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, mate. Well deserved, as I said, for all the efforts you put in for the community. So that was last week's challenge. This week's challenge, I mean, you could probably guess it. I would imagine the first Tokyo expansion will slash did you stay at home or will slash did you go and get minty so basically you're going to get yourself involved you're not going to get yourself involved who why what when and why is all of that good stuff and again your name will roll on a list of all entrants for a chance to win 10,000 upx after fees and yet another entry into the 2024 end of year prize giveaways now that brings us on to the live participants wheel which means I've got to go back. And as I say that, it's just starting to piss down rain here again. My God, the rain just will not stop. All right, so let me see. Let's see if I missed anybody. We've got Laban, Bill. I'm just going to do short ones here. Zoe, Lily, Swally. Now, Sir Ness, was that your name that was up there before? Did you Did you change your name? I think it was. I won't dox your name out. Now, we didn't get anybody else jump in last minute. I don't think. I can't see. Cernas has got himself in twice in the... <laughs> to see. So is Laban. They're trying to double up. All right. Let's see how we go. Garden Bridge. Samurai Aquatics. Garden Bridge. Red. And look at that. I spoke about him that much. He takes it away. Congrats. CERN S4. And that wraps us up for this week. Unless anybody else has something they want to chat about? No? All good? Going once, going twice? All right. A reminder that if you are in a time zone that fits in with the new Thursday night recording schedule of starting at 7 p.m. AST and you'd like to get involved, the link to the weekly Zoom is always going to be dropped in the NBA server about 15 minutes before the show kicks off. And don't forget, um, do a bunch of other podcast productions as well. So if you want to get involved with that, pretty easy to do. All you got to do is send me a DM and we'll get that sorted and underway. 
If you are heading over to Tokyo, best of luck getting what you want. If you're not, best of luck getting on with your day or sleeping in. And on that note, catch you next week. Later.